Swoboda with the Ayurvedic Health Center in Bellingham, Washington, and I'm going to talk for a little bit of time about Brahmari. I've also heard it called Brahmari. It's a pranayama pattern, practice, form of pranayama, uh, and it's also called buzzing bees or buzzing bee breath because it sounds like buzzing bees, especially if you're in a room with like 65 other people doing it. It sounds like you got a lot of bees in the room. So I like Brahmari because it's very balancing to both hemispheres of the brain. It's very soothing to the nervous system. It's very calming. So it's really helpful for people who are in a state of fear or worry or anxiety. It's really helpful for calming that down, for bringing down that level. Ah. Um, it's very soothing. It's helpful for Pitta types also because it kind of cools them off a little bit, cools their jets, as they say. Um, and so Brahmari is kind of a two-step, there's a two-step part to it. So there's a breathing aspect and there's also, um, we hum a little bit um, with the breathing. Uh, and there's a hand, there's a mudra, hand configuration to do with it. So it sounds confusing, it's not. I'll walk you through it, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, so we'll just, I'll just go into it. So you're gonna use your both hands. Uh, so watch me before you try to do it. You're going to rest the tips of your middle fingers at the inside corners of your eyes. You're gonna close your eyelids and then just lightly rest the tips of your middle fingers right there. And then you're gonna bring the tips of your index fingers together and touch them to your forehead. Then the tips of your ring fingers and little fingers are just gonna rest lightly on your cheekbones wherever they fall. So that part looks like this. You wanna make sure that your shoulders are dropped. You're not doing this, you're not crunching everything up. You're letting all of this just relax down. Uh, and then your thumbs, your thumbs get to do something too. So your thumbs are gonna press this little flap of cartilage into your ears, it's called the tragus. And you're just gonna press that in. Okay, and you're gonna do that with both hands, both sides. So it looks like this. And so you have your eyes closed. Once you press in the tragus of the ear, you don't hear very much of what's going on around you. So it's part of what makes Brahmari so effective is that it, uh, it cuts your nervous system off from the outside world. So you aren't seeing anything, you aren't hearing anything, you're not eating or drinking food, you're not smelling things usually while you're doing Brahmari. Um, so it really soothes your nervous system. It simplifies the information that's coming into you from the outside world. Um, so that's this part. You do this hand thing, right? Then the other part of it is to hum, to lightly hum. And it's just a simple, simple little hum. Um, and it sounds like this. Mm. That's on inhale and mm. And exhale. So together it sounds like this. So you can hear that the pitch is different. Inhale the pitch is higher, exhale the pitch is lower. Um, it's not usual in our Western American culture and language to hum, to vocalize on inhale, right? The we just don't do that as part of our language. And so it feels like it's stressful and effortful to make that sound. It really isn't, it's just a mind trick uh, of just allowing it to happen. Um, but that said, if you find that you're going <laughs> like stop, just don't even do it. Just allow the inhale to happen silently and then hum on exhale. So this should be easy, this should be stressless. The point of pranayama is to reduce stress, it's not to induce stress. So if you're uh, finding that you're just getting all in your head and caught up with tightening the throat to hum on inhale, just don't even do it, don't bother. And um, the pranayama will still be effective without doing it. But I like to do it, it kinda, I, I enjoy hearing the difference in pitch between the inhale and exhale. So because you are lightly constricting the throat to create this humming, 
what you'll notice in doing Brahmari is that your breath lengthens. So your inhale takes longer, your exhale takes longer. <clears throat> That's part of what makes this a soothing and relaxing experience is you get to expand the breath. This is good at the lungs because more oxygen and carbon dioxide get to exchange places at the alveoli of the lungs. Uh, and whenever we lengthen the breath, then the heart rate can also come down and relax. So not only is pranayama and brahmari specifically good for the respiratory system, uh, it's also good for the cardiovascular system for the heart. Uh, and once this breath is expanded um, and there's more oxygen and carbon dioxide transfer at the alveoli of the lungs, our blood is actually better oxygenated. Right? So then we can circulate more oxygen to the body and we can also pull more carbon dioxide, waste ox uh, carbon dioxide out and get that out of the body. Uh, so Brahmari looks kind of like a simple uh, uh, pranayama, but there's actually a lot going on with it. Okay, so when you put together this hand configuration and the humming, it looks like this. I'll just do a few rounds and you can watch me or you can go along with it if you like. Remember to press in the tragus, that cartilage flap of the ear while you do this. And remember to let your shoulders be relaxed. It always feels really good. So that was not much. That was only three breaths, but I feel better just for even doing that much. What I usually recommend is that people do it for five minutes a day. Uh, I recommend morning because then it sets the tone for the rest of your day, but this is also a really nice practice to do just before you go to sleep at night as a way to, like if your brain is really busy with stuff and lots of chatter, this is a nice way to kind of lop that off so that your brain just stops. There's this really pleasant thing that happens with Brahmari um, in terms of it massaging your thyroid. So people with thyroid dysfunction or thyroid issues, this is very supportive for the thyroid. It's a nice stimulation for the thyroid. But there's also this interesting thing where as you're doing Brahmari and your eyes are closed, you're not seeing anything, you're not hearing anything, it's as if the skull is kind of empty and these like waves of sound of the vibration that you're making kind of fill up the space. And when you do it for longer than three breaths in particular, it's almost as if the inside of your skull is being massaged. And it sounds like a strange thing to say, but you'll experience it, you'll feel it. And it just feels so pleasant to have that happen. Uh, and then there's also a vibration that goes from the throat down to the lungs. And it's really soothing for the thoracic cavity, for your chest cavity also. Um, so again, just to show you the tips of the middle fingers rest lightly at the inner corner of each eye. The tips of the index finger meet and touch at the middle of your forehead. The ring finger and index finger tips just rest lightly on your cheekbones. Your shoulder blades drop and then your thumbs press off the tragus, this cartilage of the ear. Right, you might first just rest with that to get used to all of that and feeling that you have everything in its correct place and position. And then I like to kind of ground into my sits bones, to the part of me that's touching the floor or the seat beneath me. And then you can start the pranayama. Mm -hmm.
So that's it. It's a very simple pranayama. Um, you can do it anywhere that you have your hands with you, which should be most places. Um, and please look at our website, ayurvedichealthcenter.com, and you can do a search for pranayama, also for brahmari, which is spelled B-R-A-H-M-A-R-I, brahmari, B-R-A-H-M-A-R-I. Um, and there will be some more information on the website about this pranayama and the benefits of it, um, and a little handout that you could download for it. So, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Take care.